Now, this incident that happened on Sunday was on um, Plum Pudding Hill. Um, what are some of the other hotspots where these type of incidences have occurred? Um, currently, I mean, the Rhodes Memorial Precinct is a larger area, so it would cover the space from the boundary of Newlands Forest for people who mm -hmm. sort of uh, know the area where we cross the, the past the wooden gate, the, the, the cattle grid at the bottom close to UCT. That's sort of where Rhodes Memorial Precinct starts. It goes past actual, the actual memorial and almost a little bit around the corner where the animal camps, the game camps are above Hospital Bend. That's your greater uh, Rhodes Memorial Precinct. So Plum mm -hmm. Pudding falls into that. We've had incidents close to that wooden gate, that entry point, the main mm -hmm. e access point to Rhodes Memorial. We've had a few attacks there recently. Um, so that is one hot spot. Um, I'm talking now from a cyclist perspective. Mm -hmm. We have had incidents in the Black Hill area, which is Fishhook Sun Valley, okay. outside of Table Mountain National Park area, but very close to the boundary. And cyclists tend to move in a fluid fashion. So yeah. they ride on city council land, they ride on parks land, because the trails move from one mm -hmm. area to the other, or take you from one area to the other. So we've had incidents in, on the Red Hill area, which is above um, Simonstown. Uh, there's those two are connected Black Hill Red Hill so that is one hotspot as well and then if we go into the other user groups uh, we have had incidents on Nurtuk Beach that's also part of Table Mountain National Park uh, Lions Head Signal Hill so the concentration seems to be around the urban area of Cape Town mm. um, there are no boundaries around the park except at Cape Point so it's an open access park you can access it from pretty much anywhere mm. any little footpath uh, we had a problem at Tokai, but that was before the fires, um, mm -hmm. and then the fires unfortunately closed the area down, um, which doesn't mean that that's not going to come back again once those trails are reopened. It's mm -hmm. the, the crime on the mountain moves. Um, we displace it. Um, when we had the issues in Plum Pudding around 2012-2013, we got that problem under control with the help of sand parks who were very active, um, yeah. followed our lead. Um, placed their patrols in those areas, were actively and visibly patrolling, which put everybody's minds at ease. They could see something was happening. Um, but I think then the crime was actually moved into the UCT campus because mm -hmm. we had quite a few attacks there. So it's, you know, while there's the crime flares up in specific areas, those hotspots then go away and it pops up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it's very unpredictable. But there are a few trends there that we, we know and have picked up on. Well, speaking of which, after this incident happened, the Table Mountain National Parks said that um, you know their resources haven't really been focused on that area because it's the first of its kind. Uh, you were saying earlier that that's not necessarily the case. Well, we know of, I personally know of uh, at least four incidents. Within a space of six weeks, there were three. Um, mm -hmm. pre prior to that, there was uh, somebody I know personally who was stabbed while being attacked and robbed of his bike. Um, it, it's in yeah, Plum Pudding Hill. Yes, within yeah. 200 meters of where the attack happened. Yeah. So for us, that's the same area. Yeah, where the, you know, it's in close proximity. Um, the area had, at that time, when we had that flare-up of events, uh, we were very active there. Yeah. Um, as a personal initiative myself, at the time I wasn't employed at Pedal Power, um, I put up uh, security signage mm. in, the, in the approach to those areas, warning people. I myself was patrolling in my vehicle there as well. Mm. I have an agreement with Sand Parks. They've been very cooperative. Um, we were warning. We had a trail map printed, um, and in that one print edition, we actually marked that hotspot. Uh, we raised a lot of awareness, and mm. Sand Parks were very cooperative and partnered and took ownership of that and put their rangers mm. vehicular uh, on foot into that area. There was a very strong presence, and over a period of about six months, and that's why I said earlier we had a period of two and a half years and actually a bit longer now that we've had no crime there. So it's very unfortunate that the statement was made that, it, you know, that there were no prior incidents because the, I'm somebody that is, works closely with the authorities so we have a lot of background information. But the general man in the street, the public, will take these statements in the press and take them at face value because they're assuming that Sandparks is the authority mm. and have the knowledge. So they will then say, okay, this is a low priority area and might not be as aware when they go there. We're not saying don't walk there, but we're saying be aware, but they might mm. be less aware. 
or they might not know what to look out for in a specific area. They don't know the exact location either. Plum pudding means a lot to cyclists, for instance. We know that area. We know what it means, where it is. But a lot of other visitors are not that familiar with the mountain and they might just go in there a bit blue-eyed and innocent and might themselves become a victim of crime. We hope not. I mean, we're trying our best to, to work against that now in the run-up to the summer season.